solo cabin for 25 years. Makes me sound really old. 25 years. I was in a, um, a kids' pop group from like the age of 9 or 10 throughout school. And even then, we did cabarets, we did pontins, and uh, we did a bit of TV. I left school and then teamed up with a friend, and we did, uh, my friend Colin, we did pubs in a duo called Just Us, which was great fun. Um, pubs and clubs around East Anglia. But then in 1990, I, I thought I need to be, I want to be a solo cabaret act, playing all the guitar instrumental um, music. And the first season was 1990, so 2015 now, 25 years. So I did a season at a Holdy Park, and then I did a, a run of shows in a theatre, Britannia Pier. And then it just snowballed from there. You get on different Asians books and you get phone calls. Can you do Scarborough next year, summer season? Can you do Hastings? Can you do um, wherever, seaside resort, summer seasons? And so I started doing the, uh, the circuit, the variety circuit. And then at the grand age of 25, in 1996 it was, I sort of retired from doing it and just stopped doing it. Um, and worked more on writing and producing, which I still do now anyway. But then I got sort of dragged back into doing cabaret shows again, the odd charity one. Now I'm doing it full again. Up and down the country, theatres, some of the you know, big hotels, and um, so it's, it's good. I don't think there's anybody else who do it, as in like just purely guitar, mandolin. There's people who sing. What you, in the trade we call them uh, gitvox, guitar vocalist. And they may well do instrumental features as well, but they're gitvox, where I'm just a git, guitarist. Um, and so there's you know, obviously a niche in the market for, for that type of thing. But 45 minute cabaret act of just guitar, if people haven't seen it, they'll think, oh, you know, don't you sing? No, don't you do comedy? No, just play guitar. But it's not just about playing guitar, you have to entertain. You have to have that kind of uh, presence on stage, I suppose, which to entertain the people rather than just stand there playing. So the whole thing is a, a product of uh, variety. And majority of the time nowadays, you're self-contained, you know, you use backing tracks where 20 years ago, most of the shows, you had live backing, you turn up and give the band the, the music. You still get it sometimes, some places, but it's mainly self-contained now. 45 minutes isn't long, but you still have to be there early to sound check, you have to get set up, and you often spend five or six hours at a venue before you even go on stage sometimes. So I'm still doing it and being part of the show. It's particularly good when you go on a show and you're with your friends. Comedian friends, singer friends, you know, magic act friends, and you're on a all a show together. That's where you tend to do like a 20 minute or 10 minute spot in the, in the whole variety show rather than being the main star cabaret. So it's interesting. It's definitely interesting looking at the state of mind before you go on, before you go on stage, knowing you're going to walk out in front of 2,000 people or two people.
various types of Gibson. I've always been drawn towards the Fender, Fender Stratocaster. And you get your famous guitarists like um, Invi Malmsteen, Hank Marvin, Eric Clapton, uh, endless well-known guitar. This is the type of guitar I'm talking about. This is not actually a Fender. This is a Tokai, which is um, basically a copy of a Fender, but as good from the 1980s. And these are what I use on stage, mainly. They've just got that sound I like. So I suppose it's a bit like cat and dog people. You may get people who like cats and dogs or have cats and dogs. But generally speaking, they tend to be cat or dog people. And the same as Fender and Gibson. So I'm a, I'm a Fender man. And I've always used them on stage. I couldn't imagine me doing my act with a Gibson. Oh, it'd work, but especially with the Shadows music that I play, it just wouldn't work. So yeah, this is the guitar for me. It's just got that nice tone. Mark Knopfler, Dire Straits, Dave Gilmore, Pink Floyd, they all use the Fender Stratocaster. All that type of guitar. Hasn't got to be a Fender. When I play on stage, I tend to have the, the selector switch, which gives you different tones. There. And you get that, that great cutting stratospheric sound. It's a classic sound. And I tend to have some echo on it as well. I've got a little bit of echo here. So when you play things like Apache and all those shadows things. I suppose doing the uh, the shows, you're doing, you know, the shadows type music all the way. You don't really get a chance to play sort of flashy. Well, you do play some flashy stuff, but not like um, the sort of picking fingers, uh, picking things. You know, you, you know, you don't sort of do pure guitar music. So I think people would be a bit bored. <laughs> if you did that, people would go, oh, you know, whatever. But it's nice to sit down, sit down sometimes and play like a full sounding piece so well. sit and play guitar like that it's just just a bit of fun i think when you play guitar all day teaching or play on stage really all, all you want to do at the end of it is uh have a glass of wine or a cup of tea and a sandwich you know but i think when it's your hobby people want to get home from work and play guitar but it's the opposite when you do it professionally you do it all day and then album, Logology. That was done quite some time ago, 10 years ago. Always loved cats, always had cats, and I wanted to record an album about cats. So I already had actually a couple of years before, um, but I wanted to do it on a bigger scale, more commercial. So I um, created Mogology, and it featured purring and um, meowing, all the noises that cats make, most of them. And it was just yeah, it sounds quite a novelty concept, but it was a serious album. There's all sorts of music on there. Classical, instrumental guitar, kind of dance music, pop music, ambient. And uh, that's still out there now, it's still available. Mogology, music for cats and cat lovers. My, my cats are on it, amongst other cats that I knew at the time. So, I suppose I do tend to release 
music on the record labels that I am passionate about. You've got to find a niche. state of mind kind of being spiritual, if that's the right word. It's just awareness of the possibilities of the universe, of consciousness, of why we're here, without putting any kind of set belief to it. So all my music, I feel a kind of channel comes from somewhere, even you know, when I compose, I don't, I'm never really conscious of sitting there writing a piece, it just, just appears. A tune can come to me and it just comes through, comes through and ends up on record or, you know, on CD or whatever. Um, so I am, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm not religious, although I think all religions say the same thing, which is good. And I'm not um, set in any particular path. Just being aware and being excited of looking up at the stars at night and just, just the fact that I'm here now, conscious, breathing, talking, is enough for any possibility of anything beyond what we have here. So I don't know, but I'm definitely drawn towards spiritual sites such as Glastonbury and uh, Avebury and Stonehenge and even where I live at the moment, it's on a, on a ley line. So it's a big part of my life, having that awareness, and who knows what's around the corner. And I've had lots of um, spiritual experiences with uh, aliens, and ghosts, and endless things which would be enough to convince anybody there's something going on more than what we have day to day. But that's another story I'll talk about another time. Uh, but yeah, it's a big part of my life.